Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here on Sammy Taramina blog around the OAA, the host of the last three brain cells and the host between Taramina's and Orient Neighborhood Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Orient Neighborhood Television. Um, also those, and, and also those watching um, on, um, on O1 TV as well, so... And also on the local voice on SoundCloud. So, a lot to talk about this week here. Obviously, we got a lot of girls' basketball to talk about, boys' basketball as well. We're going to also preview the um, Lakes Valley OAA Challenge coming up for both girls' and boys' basketball. Um, but our big stories in football, um, obviously, we got two big stories here to talk about. Um, obviously, the one over Adam. Obviously, the one over Adam. You know, we're going to go with Stony Creek first here. Of course, Nick Merlo has stepped down as coach of the Cougars. Um, it was confirmed a couple of weeks ago. Um, the new blog inside, I mean, the new, um, this was confirmed by Coach Coach Merlo himself. I gave him a text, um, you know, hearing that the rumors were true, and it was. So he accepted a, um, this is the coaching job at Birmingham Brother, right? At, um, Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Um, he concluded his seven-year coaching career at Stony Creek with a 27-28 record. Um, of course, um, he, um, led the Stony Creek to their first playoff appear. I mean, like their, um, their only postseason win, um, three postseason appearances for Stony Creek under Merlo. Um, they got their first ever postseason win by knocking off Chippewa Valley back in 2020, 28 to 21. Um, so Stony Creek, they, um, finished year this year, three and six. Um, really curious to see how. This program is going to go forward because you look at, of course, the, um, the the changeover at Stony Creek. I mean, you really got to look at, okay, um, you know, Merlo was very much very consistent over at Stony Creek. He led the Cougars to a very, very superb season, um, you know, superb seven years there. He had to rebuild the program. He rebuilt the weight room program over there. I mean, he did everything over at Stony Creek. and. You know, and now for him to depart for an assistant coaching gig over at Orchard Lake St. Mary's, um, working with Coach Jermaine Gonzalez. Um, I think I'm hearing he's going to be their offensive coordinator over there, um, which is really interesting considering um, Orchard Lake St. Mary's offense was not very good last year. Um, Stony Creek, we know, likes to run that traditional power offense that they like to do out of the pistol formation and all that. So it's really interesting to see where Coach Merlo goes from here. Um, obviously, being an assistant, you know what I mean? It's very interesting the choice that he made um, to leave Stony Creek to go to Orchard Lake St. Mary's. So this is a really interesting scenario. A um, very interesting decision um, to see where um, that he made and um, to go and be an assistant coach at Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Really interesting Um be really interesting to see who takes over the job over at Stony Creek. Um, and do they go in house, which I think would be very interesting. If they do. Um, they went with Bob Lancey a couple of years ago. That did not work out very well over there. Um, but it'd be very interesting to see um, what Stony Creek has going forward. I mean, their freshman and JV programs were solid um, last season, and now you get the move, make the. Um, you know, despite playing in the red, um, they're going to have a new division next year. Um, so that's something to really watch for um, going forward there. So it'll be very interesting to see who um, Stony Creek goes after um, for the new coach. And I think that'll be really interesting to see what happens with them. And it'll be something we'll keep a, keep a real close eye on. Um, obviously, Stony Creek being one of those jobs that is like, um, you know, it's, it's a very, it's a, it's an attracting job, obviously. It's a great job. Um, great kids, great, great community down there at Stony Creek. Um, you know, very curious to see how what the direction the program is going forward there. Um, then we go to Berkeley. Um, this was confirmed by um the new blog inside the OAA. Um, of course, um, I appreciate what they've said about me. Um, of course, my old blog used to be inside the OAA until um my account got hacked and um, it became around the OA. So, of course, um, but they did confirm that um, Casey Humes is the new head coach at Berkeley. 
Um, he takes over for Sean Shields. Um, you know, of course, Humes is an alumni at Berkeley. He, of course, he was the, um, of course, he, um, he played linebacker at Berkeley, so he knows the area very well. Of course, we know that Hurley Field's going to get a whole new, um, whole new, um, they're getting a whole new field next year. Um, but when you look at the product of Berkeley football, it has not been very good. Um, and obviously, you know, you look at any time you go 0 and 9, like they did this year, um, you know that something's got to be fixed when you look at Berkeley. And, you know, and then the last two years, this team, the last two years, this team has been 2 and 16. And I think the biggest problem Berkeley has is on both sides of football. I mean, la this year they only scored 46 points. And 46 points in nine games. That's not good. I mean, that is not a good recipe for success. Um, they had a lot of problems this year. I mean, oh, they had a really good quarterback. They had a good quarterback in Sonny Cabbage, but he didn't have a lot of protection. Um, and he struggled. And you look at, of course, the, the product on the field was just, it was rough on that side of the ball. I mean, offensively, you know, I think, honestly, they got they got to start from scratch offensively. But I also think the other problem for Berkeley was their defense. And obviously in the last two years, this group has allowed 702 points in in last two years. That's not winning football. That's not the football that the Berkeley football that I've been used to seeing, um, used to seeing accustomed to, um, just getting a success. And Berkeley really, you know, you look at, of course, a team that really hit rock bottom. This was the team that hit rock bottom. Um, so it's going to be um, Coach Humes' challenge ahead of them is to get that program going back up again. I mean, obviously, you look at what happened. Berkeley lost to Pontiac. Um, that was a tough loss for them to take. They lost the curve. They lost the um, Street Sign Trophy, the Battle of Woodward to Royal Oak this year. They, I mean, this team really had a lot of blowouts against them, and you know, I don't know if it was youth, if it was this the right pieces didn't fit or something, but it's got to be fixed. And and if it's not fixed, then, you know, then you're going to have this result. So Coach Humes has got a big, big challenge ahead of him. I mean, you know, you're in the, you're going to be taking on, you're going to be in the gold this year, taking on the likes of Avondale, um, Royal Oak, Pontiac, um, you know, those type of teams. I mean, like, that's, and then, and then you know, that's not an easy schedule, um, you know, for Berkeley is they've got, and also Ferndale, forgot to mention Ferndale. Of course, Ferndale had a nice year this year, but did not get in the playoffs this year. Um, so a tall task ahead of them for Berkeley, whoever the new, I mean, for Coach Humes. I mean, like, that's going to be the one thing he's got to do, and I think this is going to be interesting, is how is the weightlifting conditioning program going to be for Berkeley, how is everything going to be? It, it something's got to change when you look at that um the situation there at Berkeley. Something really has to change because if it doesn't change, then you experience what happened there. So, so if you're Berkeley, you know my thoughts on this hire. I like the Humes hire because he went to Berkeley, he played at Berkeley, he knows Hurley Field, he knows everything in and out. Um, the challenge for him is going to be his program strengths. Um, obviously, you look at, of course, I know the um, we talked to Coach Shields a couple of years ago, the Pittsburgh Steelers program, I mean, the um, the Berkeley Steelers program. I mean, the program strength is going to be a big, big-time challenge um, for them going forward. And there's also a lot of other challenges. They're going to have a new quarterback next year. They're going to have basically, it's basically starting over from scratch, and you know, and I think that's going to be very interesting for Bears fans to see is, you know, can they get back to what they were in 2020 and 2021? I remember those teams really, really well. I mean, those teams were just really good when you had the Dombrowski brothers. I mean, like Jake Dombrowski was really good. I mean, like, you know, Berkeley, I remember Berkeley when they were in 2020, 2021, they were ranked in my poll. I mean, I had them ranked as high as fourth and, you know, and that was a huge deal for Berkeley, for Bears Nation. Um, you know, obviously, when you look at the times now, um, I really think the downfall, you know, came, you know, when they, 
you know, and I don't know when what happened to this program. I really don't know what happened. I have hints, but you can't just go two and sixteen in two years and expect to um, you know, there's gonna take a learning process and all that for them. But they got a lot of work to do ahead of them, and I and I think for Coach Humes, that's gonna be the key. For Coach Casey Humes, that's gonna be the key. Is can Berkeley, you know, get to what they were? I mean, obviously under the Chris Sequoia years. And then of course during the Sean Shield middle years where they were just where they were just dominating people. I mean, like, did they win division titles? I mean, like, no, but they were right there and they were in the postseason. And, you know, they got to they took water from out to overtime. Um, I remember that game really well. Um, but, you know, there's gonna be there's gonna be some leaps and balances, and I think that'll be very interesting to see how the Bears go going forward and I think that's something to really really watch for um when you look at Berkeley is how will Humes handle the transition how will we do defensively how is the offense going to look that's a lot of questions he's got on his plate and it's his program now so you know so it's something to be really interesting to watch and I know athletic director Taylor Horn he made this decision to go with coach Humes um and I think it'll be interesting to see what he does and I think that's going to be if he if I mean like you know if he can get him turned around in year one that's going to be huge I mean like obviously but it'll take maybe a little bit of time for Berkeley to get back to where they were I mean especially when you look at the division they're in you got Avondale who's improved Avondale you know is going to be the team to beat you got Ferndale um, Ferndale had a really odd year this year a lot of senior experience but struggled um then he had Royal Oak. I thought Royal Oak was much better this year under um, Colin Campbell. Um, you know, and then Pontiac um, under Coach Wendell Jefferson. He they had a really great year this year. I mean, this I mean, like winning three games, they doubled their win total. Um, so this division's not as easy as you think. I mean, obviously you got you know when you look at the programs. Um, I really think that the gold's going to be much tougher you know, to build going forward. And I think it's going to be really interesting to watch going forward when you look at um Berkeley. So, of course, we have a coaching position filled and then, of course, a new one coming up with Stony Creek. So we're going to keep an eye on the Stony Creek situation um, going forward here on the podcast. Obviously, what direction they go, um, you know, keep an eye on it as well. So we're going to really watch that situation there. Um, let's go to some basketball news. Obviously, of course, basketball this week. Um, the girls kicked off their um their season. I got a good idea a couple of, of, on a couple of teams. Um, let's go to the gold first. I mean, obviously, when you look at the gold, um, you look at of course. I can't really judge Ferndale University or Oak Park because they they really haven't played a game yet. Um, so you really can't judge them. Um, when you go to um when but then all the and then the other um. But then the other three teams, Pontiac, Abendale, and Ferndale, you can, you can, you can really judge them. I mean, Pontiac first. I'm tell you what, I Coach Corey Lack got his first win of the year um, when they knocked off Hazel Park, 41-22. Yes, they had a, they had a tough loss to Southfield Park with Christian, um, 44-31. But I'll tell you what, I think Corey Lack's team's much better than people think. I mean, you gotta like where he's at. You gotta really like where Pontiac is at. I mean, like, you know, they're competitive. They're very competitive. I mean, there's been times where Pontiac hasn't really looked competitive, but I'll tell you what, they look that they look more experienced. They've got that varsity experience now, especially with the freshmen being sophomores. Um, they're getting there. And I think that's a good sign for Pontiac going forward is, you know, can they keep building this program up? And I think that's a good sign for them. They got a favorable schedule. They got three games coming up. We're gonna preview their um we're gonna preview their um, KLA OA challenge in a little bit, um, but I like the direction Coach Corey Let's got that team going. So a lot to like with Pontiac um, with them. Then I got Avondale. I mean Avondale, they're, all, they're one and one right now. Um, tough loss to Groves. They came back in that game, tried to come back, had a good win early in the year. Um, you know, um, knocked off Warren Mott pretty handily. Um, so when I look at Avondale, Madison Manyweather is the key to that whole team. Yes, you got Morgan McPherson, but Manyweather is the key to that team because if she struggles, 
then Tip, then Avondale's gonna struggle. But I think Avondale's much better than they were um, last year. They were much better than they were last year. Um, obviously, McPherson's a big deal right there. But um, you know, for Avondale, I think they're fine. I, I'm not pressing the panic button on them, but I think they're gonna be fine. Um, then you have Ferndale. I mean, Ferndale's off to a two and zero start. I think it's time to start paying attention to the Eagles. I mean, Keith Paris has done, you know, he's, I mean, they didn't play a lot of games last year. But when any time you have in two games, you're averaging over 54 points, it's over 50 points a game, that's pretty good. Now, albeit the competition's not the greatest. I mean, I think they played River Rouge and, um, River Rouge and um, Ann Arbor Skyline. Um, both those teams not very good this year. I mean, both teams are going to really struggle. But you look at Ferndale, the path that that team has gone, the direction they have, they got a lot of experience. They got some impact freshmen um, who can make some noise. I mean, like, they're going to be a team to be reckoned with. And I think, you know, they're going to be – Devin Avondale could be the teams to beat in the gold division this year. And I think that's going to really be the, um, the story between those two teams. Who's going to be the one that wants to go up? in the division. Who's going to be the team that does? And I think that's the big question we're going to look at with um with Abdel and Ferndale, of course, both teams um making the um making the move. Obviously, when you look at Ferndale side of things, um obviously Ron Rickman being the athletic director, seeing the success that he had winning the Division 2 state championship last year, um you kind of want to you kind of wonder if, if that's the same pathway that um you know that is to be taken. Obviously, when you look at when you look at what they've been doing, I mean, program strength to me over at both schools, especially Ferndale, is very concerning, and that's something to really, really watch for. Um, you know, going forward, is can both Ferndale and Avondale can they do enough to build their sub varsity teams to help their varsity programs? I mean, no, I know Ferndale's really done that on the boys' side under Coach Juan Rickman. Um, but it comes down to numbers and players who want to come out and play. I mean, that's really the thing to really watch for when you look at Ferndale is which player is going to step up and, you know, you know, and I think, you know, if they can get a lot of numbers in that program, you know, develop that whole program. And I think that'll be really good going forward. You just can't rely on one team. You got to have an entire program. When you look at the most successful teams, you know, they have, have done that. So, you know, so that's really something to really watch is can they, you know, can they develop from a program perspective? I mean, Avondale, they have enough resources over there to do it. But the question is going to be is how many kids can they get to come out and play? And I think that's going to be the challenge for Coach Roy Christman and his team going forward there. So that's something to really, really watch for. Um, let's go now to the blue division. I mean, obviously, when you look at this division here, um, Farmington... You just, you can't just, you can't score 16 points in two games and expect to win. You can't, you can't give up an average of 79 points per game, a 69 points per game. That can't happen. I mean, I know Coach Nally Nolak's got a lot of challenges over there for Emerson, but you just, but to see those two games against Lavonia Stevenson and Birmingham Seahome, that can't happen. Seriously. I mean, you got to, there's, there's a pride factor that comes into that. There's a pride factor. You know, you just can't go and score 16 total points in two games. That That's not winning basketball. And then you're giving up over 69 a game. That can't happen. That's got to change. That's got to change if you're coaching Allie Nolak in Farmington. That's got to change. Because if not, this is going to be a long year for you. I mean, that's really what it is. Is you got to figure it out. You got to figure out and quick because that schedule is not easy. You know, they got a brutal schedule coming up. I mean, I mean, you got Heartland coming up, pre win that one. That's going to be brutal. I mean, like, it's not, it's not good. I mean, it's not good over there at North Farm, at Farm Tour. It's not good right now. Um, Troy Athens, um, falling 57 29. I've got concerns about Coach JC Clump's team. I mean, yes, they have, um, Al, it, yes, they got some good players in there. I mean, like, I mean, like, but still, you can't just go and give up. I mean, like, you just go and can't give fifty seven points in our Farmington. Um, it's a tough, 
scenario. And that's a concern for me. Um, I've got concerns about Troy Athens right now. I really do. Um, they got to get that fixed and quick. They really do. Adams, better than, the, better than I thought. Because when you look at the Highlanders, um, you know, yes, they did lose 35-17 to Rochester. They did knock off water for Kettering 33-20. I think Coach Joe Malberg's team's better than you think. I think they're fine. I'm not I'm not worried about Adams. I'm, I mean, I think Adams is better than they were last this year. I think they're going to be more than fine. And I think that's a good sign for them going forward. Um, I'm not too worried with Adams right now. I think, you know, I like Faith Zolas. I like what the they I like their roster. I like their lineup. I mean, Samantha Blaine's been solid for them. Um, but I like what Coach Joel Malberg's done with that team. I mean, he's gonna be more than fine. I'm not worried about it. Um, then let's look at Berkeley. Berkeley, you know, they had that tough loss to Plymouth. Um, but they had that win against Edith Eisenhower. That's huge. Coach Clay Shaver's got that team going in the right direction. Mavi Nolan is playing well right now. They got others as well. I mean, but when you look at Berkeley, you know, they're going to, the schedule is going to ease up for them until that game three days from Christmas when, when Royal Oak comes in there. That's going to be very interesting. That's going to be, this, that's the, that's the gut check game for the Bears. Against the Ravens. We know how good Royal Oak is. But. It's a good start for Berkeley right now. The way that they're playing right now. Um, yes they had that tough loss to um, Plymouth. Um, we're going to preview that Lake Orion Plymouth game. That's going to be really interesting. For the um, KLA OA challenge. But. Plymouth's a solid team. I mean, they got two guards that can shoot. Um, they got a solid big. Um. I mean, that team is better than they were last year, but in what in, that has a lot of proven experience. So Plymouth's not an easy team. For Berkeley, they're fine. They're fine. I mean, I'm not worried about them. I'm really not. I mean, and then let's go to Troy. Um, I, it's hard for me to figure out Laura Guzman's team. And I'm not being mean to Diamond Prince at 31 against Sterling Heights Stevenson. But they had two losses to Romeo and then Bumiel's Cranber Kings, but that was just mind boggling. I mean, in the in the two losses, they averaged about twenty in the two they were about 26, 26 points a game. In their win against Stevenson, they averaged fifty three. So the question I have for Troy is Reagan, I'm wondering where Reagan Zider's at. Where's Charlotte Higginbottom at? Or Carla Higginbottom at? Um, what What's going on at Troy? What's going on? That's something to figure out. I mean, I got. I, it's hard for me to explain. You know what I mean? But I know, I know they're going through a transition period, and it's got to happen during the season. So when I look at Troy, there is some concern, but there's not some concern. I mean, Diamond Prince has played, has been playing some good ball lately, but obviously with Troy, it's not as easy as you think. You know, trying to change the mindset and and the culture of a program that really struggled last year. So if you're Coach Guzman, be patient. You got to be patient with him. You know, I mean, like I can't figure this team out right now. I mean, they got experience. I mean, they got red experience. But yet, they, they said it one and two. So it's really odd to figure this team out right now. It really is. So we'll see. And then Southfield Arts and Tech um, had no issue at Warren Michigan Collegiate. Um, Christian Bank to 28 points for A&T. Um, A&T, I still got concerns with them defensively. Um, they're the early favorite right now in this division. So, But defense for me... Just scares me. I mean, and I'm not being mean. And they may say like, you know, I mean, like, I got legitimate concerns with A&T defensively. Legitimate concerns. 
Yes, they did knock off War Michigan Collegiate. Held them 35 points. But when they play a team that's better than War Michigan Collegiate, that's going to be scary to watch. I mean, that could be scary. That could be high-octane offense on both sides of the floor. That could be. So that's a challenge for Coach Shakita Coltrane. Big challenge for them going forward. Um, let's go now from the red to the white here. Um, North Farmington. I mean, I did not see this team coming. Um, off to a 2-0 start. Um, Aziah Jihad has been dominant. Um, 27 points against Warren Woods Tower. 14 points against Troy Athens. Love in the second half. Um, I think the one that really has been impressive has been Anaya Billups. Um, Anaya Billups, of course, we know, um, you know, had a good summer ball. Um, she had 13 points against Troy a against um, Warren Woods Tower and 11 against Troy Athens. Um, I think Coach Michael Allen's team's better than people think. Hannah Hart's been playing well for them. Um, I mean, like, you really got to look at North Farmington and say, okay, who knows? I mean, maybe this could be a team that could be scary. Their non-conference is not great um, until the end of the year. I mean, like, they're going to, I mean, they. I mean, the team that might be their toughest test, and there's going to be Adams. And I think that's an interesting matchup. I mean, obviously, you know, but North Farms, they could be, they could end, the, end 2023 on a really good note. They could. And then I think, you know, they had that game against Lake Orion in January, which is going to be really interesting. So we'll see what Coach Michael Allen's team has. I mean, I think right now they're clicking on, on all cylinders right now. They really are right now. So then you have Groves. I mean, Groves went 1-1 one one this past week, 70-34. Um, um, Troy Cunt lost Country Day, knocked off Amdale 54-50. Um, um, you know, with them, um, I mean, like, Sierra Rocco, she's going to be as, as good as they take them. I mean, so that'll be something to really watch for, uh, for Coach Allison Heidi and her team. How is, that's the question. Seaholm coming off a win against Farmington, 59-8, and then having that tough 47-30 loss to Celine. Um, Addie Flynn's going to be the key for that team. For Coach Chris Manchester. I mean, she's going to be the key. I mean, Mary Gummis at 12 points. Um, Emma Weber at 11. But this team's going to be as good as Eddie Flint takes him. So, we'll see. We'll see what happens with Seaholm. But, you know, good bounce back for them against Farmington. Harper Woods um, knocked off St. Clair Shores. Um, Lakeview 49-39. Solid win for, Co for um, Harper Woods. Um, a lot of experience on that team. A lot of experience. So they're right now off to a good start. Bloomfield Hills, it's clear as day they miss Ruby Smith. Ruby Smith's battling an ankle injury. Um, they had the tough 36 33 loss of Stony Creek. Um Brianna Young, Ashley Fortner are solid players. Just put Ruby Smith in the interior. That's scary. So I like what Coach Chris Massey's done with that team. Um, but they got a long way to go. They really do. Um, Royal Oak, 45-34 against Mount Clemens. Um, they're, they got a tough non-conference schedule in December. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens with them. But I like where Coach Brian Zapata's team's at. Really do. Really do. Then to the red. Um, Oxford had a split week. They lost to Macomb, Dakota, 40-30. Um, then they bounced back, knocked off Davison, 42-34. Allison Hofstad at 18 points. Peyton Richter at eight points. Um, Oxford's going to be as good as um, Allison Upstadler takes him. I mean, you know, I think I think she's the key to everything that Oxford does. I mean, that's the difference when you look at Oxford. So that's something to really watch for. Clarkston off to a two and one start. Um, didn't look great against Heritage. Um, only winning that one by six. Got blown out by Chelsea. Um, and then had to win a two-point game against Hazlitt on a buzzer beater by Brooklyn Covert. This is going to be interesting to see going forward. Who's going to take that winning shot? Is it Eliana Roback? Is it Brooklyn Covert? I mean, Roback had 21 against Chelsea. 
But I know she's been battling injuries. Colbert's been playing well for Coach Aaron Good now. But, you know, Emily Valencia is going to have to step up. Um, Claire Walker's going to have to step up. Um, but I really got concerns when I look at Clarkson. I am really, really concerned when I look at the Wolves. And I think that's something to really, really watch for with Clarkson is can they find a way to handle, you know, can they find a way to handle, um, you know, they got that big win, but they got some, they got a tough match coming up with Howell. And that's going to be really interesting to see how that one goes. Um, the star match between them, Eliana Roback and Gabby Pico. We're going to talk that in a couple minutes. Lake Orion, you know, when you look at the Dragons, um, 68-23 against, against Pontiac Notre Dame Prep. Um, Ryan Palachek, 19. Nevaeh Woods, 16. Nevaeh Woods is going to be a difference maker for the Dragons. I mean, she's good. She is really good. I mean, you look at a course, and you put her with Izzy Walensky, Charlotte Peploski, um, you got Ellie Britt at point guard, Lexi Strohstein coming off the bench. Coach Bob Bridges got something. Their six has been very good. Grace Hohenshine was, has went in there, has been very good. So has Danny Heck. Lake Orion's a machine right now. I mean, yes, he lost nine seniors last year, but when you look at the Dragons, and I know Coach Bridges said that this team is young. They're young, but, you know, let's not forget, all these girls have varsity experience playing elsewhere. You look at Ellie Britt playing softball in golf. You look at Charlotte Pavlovsky playing softball. Um, obviously, Brian Palachek, Lexi Strohschein bring district championship experience. You look at Nevaeh Wood. She's been to a district final twice. I mean, you really, I mean, like, this team's got experience. They got experience. But in different ways. So, but, well, I'll be curious to see how that game against Plymouth goes. Because that's going to be really interesting to see how the Dragons do. But, good start for the Dragons to start off the year. Um, West Bloomby, you can't judge them yet because, you know, they haven't played a game yet. Rochester. Coming off a 35-17 win against Adams. Alice Max at 18 points. They still got some guard issues. I mean, guard concerns is my biggest worry when it looks at Rochester. And they got a tough December schedule coming up. So that's something to really, really watch for at Rochester. So we'll see what happens. See what happens. On the boys' side, Ferndale University is coming off two good wins. Um, you know, they're starting to click at the right time. Royal Oaks off the 4-0 start. Two wins against against Seaholm and Boompy Hills. That's huge for them. Pontiac had had their two-game losing winning streak snapped that they're losing to Jackson. Um, they're still a very young team, but I got a lot of faith in Pontiac. Um, Berkeley, um, they have they are rolling right now. Three straight wins after knocking off Troy. Um, you know, they got confidence right now rolling right now for them. Um, Rochester. Off of a rough start. Um, Jake Tandy at 11 points in a 61-39 loss to Adams. Um, got some serious concerns with Rochester. It's just they're going to take some time having to put everything in, in place. Um, behind Max Mall and Luke Lyons. Um, you know, that's that's a concern I have going forward there. As, is Rochester, obviously. Can they put it together? That's a big concern I have with them. Oxford, they're 1-3. and three. I think they're fine. Um, obviously they're, I mean, they're going to be okay. Um, I'm not pressing the panic button on coach Joe Feder Federick's team at all. Um, really not pressing the panic button. I think they're going to be fine. Um, Avondale, you know, they had that tough loss in Birmingham and brother rice. They played a tough schedule. I mean, don't get me wrong. They're one and two, two losses to good teams. And see home's solid. Well, see home's been okay up and down this year. And then you look at, um, and then Birmingham brought the rice. There's nothing you can do there. I mean, like, obviously, you're playing one of the top teams in the state. And they just didn't have a chance in that game. Just really. It just, I'm not being mean to Coach Jared Thomas, but honestly, you know it was going to be tough. It was going to be difficult. As long as they keep their heads high, they're going to be fine. I mean, Avenue will be fine. Stony Creek, I got some concerns. Big concerns. They did not look good against Holy Names. 
Canada, and they did not look good against New Bob and Quebec. They got serious concerns. I mean, I know it's year two. You know, you expect the, you expect the transition. You know, you expect wins. They're going to get wins, but this team is, is clear as day. When Trey Walker's on the floor, they're very good. When he's not, they struggle. I mean, like, they've got to address that. And I've got some serious concerns when I look at Stony Creek going forward. When I look at the Cougars, they got some concerns. Southfield, um, when I look at the Warriors, um, had that surviving game against Frederick Douglass and then lost 74-45 to West Bloomfield. Um, West Bloomfield's very good. Southfield Arts and Tech, they're a young team. I mean, Coach Terrence Porter, team, they're struggling a little bit. And they got a tough schedule coming up, I mean, in December. I mean, it is brutal. They've got to fix that in quick. Bloomfield Hills, they played much better in their game against Royal Oak than they did against um, Wall Lake Central. I mean, 42 points um, is, a, is, is an improvement for them. They did allow 52, which is concerning. Um, I think they're going to be fine as long as they keep improving and getting better. And I think the results will come. I mean, off to a rough start, but I think they can get things fixed. I mean, I think they're going to be fine. We'll see what happens there. We'll see what happens. Farmington, when you look at them, playing North Farmington, your arch rival in a very difficult matchup. Um, 68-25 with that score. Rough night for Greg Gray's, um, Jordan Turner and company. Um, we'll see what happens, I mean, with them. I mean, there's some, a lot of questions with Farmington. Um, can they turn things around quick? That's the big question. I mean, they're a young team. Don't get me wrong. They are a very, very young team. We'll see what happens. Lake Orion, rough week for the Dragons. Two losses to Pontiac, Notre Dame Prep, and to Clarkston. Um, Dragons have got to take care of the basketball. It's clear as day. If they take care of the ball, success will happen for this group. I mean, against Oxford and against Rochester, um, they they did a decent job to keeping taking care of the basketball. I think that's the problem is – can they take care of the basketball? That's the big question I have with Lake Warrior. That's that's the one you got to address with them. Um, and that was shown in their two losses was not taking care of the basketball and getting into um and getting into um droughts. So all signs of a very young team. Um, obviously they're going to need more from Ryan Rushell and also um you know Zach Parks had 13 points against Clarkston, but he had to really work hard for those points. Um. So they got to get ways, create some different ways for Parks and Rochelle to get open um, and get their shots. Um, and also, others got to step up, too. I mean, there were some times their defense looked good, but sometimes, you know, they really struggled. And, you know, for Lake Orion, that's going to be, it's going to be like that for them this year. Seaholmes had a rough patch, lost to Royal Oak, lost at East Lansing, one and three. I'm starting to press the panic button a little bit on, Coach um, Mike DeGeter's team. Um, East Lansing's good. Don't get me wrong. They're very good. But when they had that loss, there's some concerns. They got some concerns. So we'll see what happens with Seahome. I mean, they're always a scrappy team. They're going to be scrappy. They're going to be competitive. Um, we'll see what happens to them going forward there. Um, Troy Athens, they had their first loss to Redford Thurston. They're going to be fine. I'm not worried about Coach Dave Scott's team. I'm not press the panic button on them. They're going to be fine. Harper Woods, I don't know if they played against Detroit Edison or not. Um, they didn't look good against Noah Detroit Catholic Central, although they're a pretty good team. Um, but there's still some questions with them. Um, don't get me wrong. Troy... They bounced back real nicely after their loss to Berkeley. Um, knocked off Groves, who was very good. Um, Groves, I think, you know, when you look at them, um, they're my next team to talk about. But Troy, relying on their big three, Mason Parker, um, John Whiteside, and um, and um, Chase Kuyper. Um, they're going to be their three guys to go that Troy's going to lean on this year for Coach Gary Fralick. So really something to watch for with them going forward there. And then you look at, of course, in the red, you got Groves. Um, we mentioned them. They had bounce back against Oxford. 
at that tough loss to Troy. Um, they really missed Josh Simpson. Um, I know one of their star players has been hurt for them. Um, so expect getting back really soon. So really something to watch for Groves. Oak Park coming off that win against Macomb, Dakota. Had to play in a couple days. Um, so we'll see what happens to them going forward. Clarkson riding, of course, Peyton Simmons and um, John Call. They combined for 33 of their 52. Um, in the win against Lake Orion, they had that tough buzzer beater loss to um, Detroit Old Redford Academy. Um, um, so that's something to really watch for going forward with Clarkston. Adams, can they can they find another big for um, Peter Kardashian and William G? I mean, like that would really take the pressure off those two guys. If they can find that, the coach Isaiah Novak Novak's going to be solid. West Bloomfield, I'm um, coming off a good their first win against Southfield Arson Tech. Uh, after two really tough blowout losses. I mean, like, so I like where Coach Arnett Jordan's got that team going. Ferndale coming off a win against River Rouge. Um, sitting at 2-1. and one. Um, Also knocked off Davison. Lost to Birmingham Brother Rice early in the in the week, a couple, last week. Um, I think they're they're starting to roll again. Trenton Roos has been playing really good basketball. And then North Farmington, obviously, coming off that 68-25 win against, against um, Farmington. Of course, Tyler Sprett and um, Landon Williams. Both having big games for Coach Tom Negotian's team. So that's my take here on everybody here recapping the um basketball front for the week. Now let's let's preview the um the KLAA OAA challenge that's coming up this week. Um starting on Thursday and Friday. Um let's go to the girls first. We got our um we got our first matchup here featuring two teams that were in the, in the state semifinals last year in Division One. Got Plymouth Salem going to West Bloomfield to take on the Lakers. This is a very interesting matchup because, you know, of course, you have Madison Morrison um, over at Plymouth Salem. On the other side, you have the Davis sisters, Kendall Hendricks and Destiny Washington. Um, I think when you look at this on paper, I think West Bloomfield's favored because of the depth that they have. Um, and I think West Bloomfield's a little bit more deeper this year than they were last year. And that's that's pretty scary if you're coach um, Daryl McAllister. Um, that could be a really interesting matchup there. Uh, Dearborn Fortson goes to Rochester to take on the Falcons. Um, this is another interesting matchup. I mean, of course, they had the Amaj sisters, Sanaya and Rokaya Amaj taking on Alice Max. Um, Max, we know how good she's been. Uh, the battle in the interior is going to be very interesting. But if Max gets into foul trouble, Rochester's in trouble. I mean, you know, Fortson, but Fortson has not scored over 50 points this season. Um, and they're coming off a loss to South Lion East. So their guards, Rochester's guards, Lucy Cook, and Gulia, Kayla Parsons, and, and Angela Shulowski, they need to step up in this matchup for Coach Bill Thurston. They do, I think, and take the pressure off Max, and I think that'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. Howell at Clarkston. Gabby Peichel against Aliana Roback. Roback at 21 against, um, in their loss to Chelsea. Um... And then, of course, Pico at 34 against Farmsteel's Mercy in their 60-59 win. Um, obviously, role players are going to be important in this game. Um, Alexis Lee of Howell um, going against Brooklyn Colbert, Emily Valencia. Um, whatever role player steps up in this game is going to be very critical. So it'll be very interesting to see how this matchup goes between the Wolves and the Highlanders over at Clarkston. Um, that'd be really interesting. Belleville at Oxford. Um, this was interesting because Belleville likes to run it up and down the floor, putting up 70 points. Oxford's a team like to slow things down. And they like to play sound, sound defense, and they're well coached too. So this is going to be an interesting match with two different styles. Um, whoever style shows up in this game will win this one. So that'll be really interesting to watch in that one. Novi heads to Troy to take on the Colts. Um, two teams that are are um, rebuilding a little bit. Um, Novi, of course, um, won their district when they had, when they upset Plymouth. Um, and then they also knocked off this year. They knocked off Bishop Foley and um, Wall Lake Northern, both solid teams. Um, Novi, of course, they got Jordan Public and Anna Lindsay. Troy, we know what they got. Obviously, they're coming off losses to Romeo and Blue Bales Cranbrook Kingswood. 
Um, they got some really good young players in Diamond Prince, Regan Zyder. Um, you got Carly Higginbottom. Um, you got others in that on that on that team that are really good for Coach Laura Goodman. Um, really interesting matchup to see over there. And can Troy step up? That's the key. Being at home is going to help them. Um, so that'll be something to really watch for in that matchup against a really good Novi team. Brighton goes to Stony Creek to take on the Cougars. Um, Brighton's coming off a a loss, a 40-29 loss to Dexter. Um, they got experience. You got Mackenzie Gervais, Sarah Audrey, Sophia Moore, Megan Keller, Elbow Brock, Block, Genevieve Cox, and Noel Ivo coming back. Um, we know Stony Creek, they got a new coach in Columbus Williams taking over. Um, they did not look good against Boone Bay Hills. They had to survive 36-33 behind um, Sarah LaPrairie, 18 points. Um, uh, 13 points. Um, I think it's going to be an interesting game. I mean, it's going to be a really interesting game between those two teams. So we'll see what happens there. Plymouth at Lake Orion. Um, this is going to be a fun one because Plymouth has a ton of balance. You have Mackenzie Dykin, Anna, Annie Flavin, both shooters. Eliana DeMarca inside. Zianna Saab's a defensive stopper. Olivia Mestag's another defensive stopper. And Evelyn Segfish and Casey Wilson are both also solid players. Of course, Lake Orion, we know, has their starting fives very good. I mean, you look at, of course, I mean, like, but they're also young, too. So I'm curious to see how the coaching matchup between um, between um, Kyle Ballard of Plymouth and Bob Bridges of Lake Orion. That's going to be really interesting. That coaching matchup, um, how they're how both how that match is going to be. I mean, Plymouth comes in as a deep team, but Lake Orion we know has the talent more than more than capable of pulling a win like this. So this will be a really interesting game between the Wildcats and the Dragons over at Lake Orion coming up this week. Wayne Memorial at Troy Athens. Top match for um Troy for Troy Athens going against Wayne Memorial. Wayne Memorial likes to run the ball up and down. Um Mariah Cross at 25 with four three pointers. Morgan Cross 14 points. And Colleen O'Brien had a triple double, 12 points, 10 boards, 10 assists, and their 78-36 blow of Kalamazoo Central on Saturday. Um Troy Athens, we know, has got some concerns, especially defensively. Um, they did not look good against against North Farms in their 57-29 loss. So a lot of concerns for Coach J.C. Klump and the Red Hawks heading in that matchup. Wayne Memorial, really, really good team going in that matchup. Heartland at Farmington. Um, difficult match for Farmington. Heartland, we know, is very good. They got some good players there, but Heartland's coming off a 57-56 win against Lansing Holt. And then they have, they have Grand Blank before that game. So tough match for Farmington in that matchup against um, Hartland. So really difficult matchup there. Northville at Adams. This could be a sneaky good game. Adams, very young team. Um, but they are they're starting to put things together a little bit. And that and Northville, we know is a they're, they're Northville replacing it seven seniors. Um, they're coming off. They're one and one right now. Um, they beat Lakeland. But they lost to Warren Regina. So that'll be really interesting to see how that matchup goes. Um Adams, we know they're we know they're solid. Um Samantha Blaine, Layla Tomzak, Faith Zolas, um, and company. They're gonna be ready for that game. I mean, they should be ready for that game against a really good um against a good Northville team um going into Rochester. Livonia Stevenson at Royal Oak. Um this one's interesting because it's two teams with two different styles. I mean, Stevenson likes to go up and down, has a lot of experience. So does Royal Oak. Both they like to go they like to slow the game down. Both teams have a lot of experience. So interesting matchup over at Royal Oak. It should be a fun and defensive tight matchup between the Spartans and the Ravens. So that'll be really interesting there in that one. Dearborn at Avondale. Um Dearborn won 13 games last season and already have wins against Plymouth Christian and Pickney. And was coming off a tough loss to Groves. Um, but blowout win against Warren Mott. For Coach Roy Krishman, this is a statement game. If they can do that, if they can win this one, that'll be huge for them. So we'll see what happens there in that one. But it'll be a statement game 
for Coach Roy Cushman and his program if they have proven themselves to have turned the corner. So we'll see what happens in that matchup. Um, Plymouth Canton at Bloomby Hills. Tough matchup for Bloomby Hills. If Ruby Smith can't go, then I think Plymouth Canton's going to be... This could be, this could spell trouble for Bloomby Hills. I mean, this is a big, big game for um for the Blackhawks. I mean, Canton's solid every year. Each year, they've been solid. I know I've heard Kyle Ballard's comments talking about Plymouth and Plymouth Canton. They're all three schools in Plymouth are really good this year. So, really interesting matchup to watch in that one. Um, Livonia Franklin at Seaholm. Um, Livonia Franklin, the Patriots are out to a 2-0 start. Seaholm's 1-1. One one. I mean, coming off a loss of Celine. So, this will be really interesting to see how they, um, how... Both teams handle this matchup. I mean, it'll be a really interesting matchup between the Patriots and the Maples at Seaholm. Then Livonia Churchill at Groves. Churchill's coming off, um, you know, Churchill's, they're both teams are coming off one on one games. I mean, losses to powerhouse programs as well. Um, this will be a really interesting game. Um, two teams that are very evenly matched, I think. Um, so we'll see what happens. I mean, we'll clearly see what happens in this one. It should be a fun matchup. Um, then you have Westland John Glenn at Pontiac. Um, Pontiac much better in the record indicates they're at one one. Westland John Glenn um had that blowout against um Madisonites Master. They won fifty two to twelve. Um, it should be an interesting matchup over there at Pontiac between the um between the Rockets and the Phoenix. I mean, really interesting match how that one goes. The boys side of things, of course, we got Troy at Novi. Of course, the boys' games are being played at KLA sites. Girls are at the OA sites. So we got Troy at Nova here. Um, interesting matchup, of course, between, you know, the big three of Troy going out to Nova. Nova, a very athletic team. They're coming off a win against Berkeley. Um, so that'll be really interesting there. And then, um, and then of course, Nova, of course, lost to, um, of course, Troy. Um, be, and Troy lost to Berkeley. And Novi beat Berkeley. So that's the common team that both teams have had this year. So we'll see how that one goes. Clarkson at Brighton. Um, tough matchup for Brighton. I mean, obviously they had that loss to Redford Thurston and a win against Traverse City Central, but this is Clarkson. I mean, I'm sorry. This is Clarkson that they're playing. Tough matchup for Brighton. Not sure if Dan Leach will be at that game. Really not. I know he has a very good radio crew at WHNN. In Livingston County, 975. Really good radio station. Um, Groves at Plymouth Christian at Plymouth Canton. Top match for Groves. Um, it'll be interesting to see if, if um Simpson's back for them. Um if Groves for them, they gotta get healthy. That's the key. Um, so it'll be very interesting. I mean, Cl Canton's lost two of their games by a combined seven points. So we'll see how that one goes. Adams at Northville. Um, Northville, we know, has got experience. Um, you know, they got Carlos Anderson, Justin Hilling, and Craig Williams. We know what Adams has with them. Peter Kardashian and William G. Um, it'll be very interesting there in that one there. Troy Athens at Howell. Um, this could be another game that Dan Leach attends. Um, you know, when I look at Athens, they got a proven experienced team. Um, Howell has some experience, um, you know, but it'll be very interesting to see how this one goes. So we'll see how that one pans out. <coughs> so we'll see how that one goes. Farmington at Livonia Franklin. This is going to be tough, tough, tough sledding for the Falcons taking on the um, Patriots of Livonia Franklin. I mean, this is going to be a real, real tough um, sled for them. So it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. In that one for Farmington when they take on Livonia, um, Franklin, Avondale and Deer at Dearborn. Man, it's gonna be a tough match for Coach Jared Thomas and his team. I mean, this is gonna be brutal. I mean, you look at it. You look at Dearborn. I mean, they're solid. A lot of experience. Avondale, we know, going through that transition period under Coach Jared Thomas. Um, it's gonna be a tough matchup. Tall order for um. Be a tall order for Avondale going down to the D Bourne. So it'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. Southfield Arson Tech at Belleville. Um, you know, I know Coach Terrence Porter loves tough matchups. Bell is coming off a one and two start. 
Losses to Redford, Thurston, Ypsilanti, Lincoln, but they did beat Romulus. Um, it'll be tough for AT in that matchup for sure. Going up in that matchup for sure. Lake Orion at Plymouth. Of course, the girls are playing at Lake Orion. The boys are at Plymouth. Plymouth, we know, has got some experience. They got Idris Cotton, Zach Jones, Ross Crap. Lake Orion, we know about Quay Fly, Ethan Sharkey, Ryan Lushrow, Gabe Scott. Um, MJ Long could be a wild card in this matchup. Obviously, Lake Orion's got Zach Parks. Um, so it'll be really interesting. And also Nick Galvin. So I'll be, it'll be very interesting to see how this matchup goes between the um, Dragons and the Wildcats on the um, great top at Plymouth. Um, it'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. That'll be for sure there. Um, Oxford at Plymouth-Salem. Um, both teams evenly matched. One and three start. Um, I'm curious to see um, who breaks out in this game. Can Oxford overcome? Um, can Oxford get a big win again in Wayne County? That's the big question. Interesting matchup for sure for the Wildcats. Um, taking on a very good Plymouth-Salem team um, in that matchup there. Um, Pontiac at Wayne Memorial. Uh, when you look at this matchup here, Wayne Memorial, um, you know, they're off to a good start this year. Um, and they're off to a 2-0 start with their blowout win against Romulus. It's going to be a tough match for Pontiac. Pontiac's a very young team. So we'll see what happens in that one for Coach Andrew Myers. Um, really interesting matchup for sure in that one there. Um, Royal Oak at Livonia Stevenson. Of course, the girls are playing at Royal Oak. This is a, the boys are playing at Livonia Stevenson. Um, Royal Oak's out to a 4 0 start. Um, Livonia Stevenson's a team that likes to go up and down. Royal Oak likes to slow you down. Royal Oak relies on that defense and their three point shooting. I mean, Camden Clark, Dylan Hoffman, um, you know, that'll be something to really watch for. I mean, Livonia Stevenson, they got a lot of experience. So that's a, that's a game to really watch for in that one. I think it'll be a really interesting game, to say the least, over there between the um, Ravens and the Spartans. Rochester at Dearborn Fortson. Again, the girls, another girls versus boys matchup, obviously. Of course, the girls are at Rochester. The boys are at them. Dearborn Fortson. Top matchup for Rochester. Um, when you look at this matchup, Forson's out to a 4-0 start. A lot of experience. You got players like Muhammad Abad, Mustafa Al Adervani, Ali Guba, Yusuf, Yusuf Sali, Aladai Dab, and Hassan Al-Zubuki coming back. Top match for Coach Nick Ebola. Um, when you look at that matchup with the experience Steelborn Forson has. So, it'll be interesting how that one goes. Um, Berkeley goes to Heartland. I know Berkeley's off to a solid start. Heartland's off to a 3 0 start. Um, this should be a really interesting matchup. This could be another matchup that coach, uh, that, that Dan Leach maybe attends. So, really, you know, really three interesting choices for coach for, um, for Dan Leach to attend to this week. Cause I know he does the, um, radio broadcast over in Livingston County and also parts of Tennessee County as well. So, Three interesting choices to go to. Really interesting. Then you have West Bloomin at Westland John Glenn. Um, Westland John Glenn's off to a solid. I mean, they're they're still a young team. West Bloomin, we know, is coming off a rough start to the year. They figured some things out a little bit. This should be a really interesting matchup over there at Westland between the Lakers and the um and the Rockets. And then last but not least, the Vonia Churchill. Taking on Seaholm and Livonia. Both teams struggling. Um, you know, you really look at, of course, um, you know, both of them have struggled. You know, I mean, like, of course, the Boney Churchill's played on um, Berkeley and Troy Athens already and, and have fallen to both those two teams. And Seaholm, we know, has been up and down. I mean, like, so when you look at this matchup here, um, these are two scrappy teams going at it. And I think it could be a very interesting matchup between the Maples and the um, and the Chargers. Um, I think it could be a good game. I mean, I really think, you know, Seahome we know has got that depth. We know that they have a lot of depth with that team. Um, program strength, that could be a program strength game. I know Seahome's been really good when it comes to program strength. Um, their sub varsity's have always been very good over there at Seahome. So a lot to really look at heading forward. Um with this challenge coming up. It's the first year that the OA and the Lakes Valley and the um, Kensington Lakes Activity Association is having the, is having this classic. 
Um, so it should be it, it'll be really interesting to see how this matchup goes. Of course, we'll recap each matchup, of course, on the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OAA. Um, final thoughts before I go this week, of course. Um, we'll keep an eye on the coaching situation at Stony Creek. Um, we'll see what happens with them going forward there. Everybody, we're signing off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Take care, everybody. God bless, and I'll see you all next week. Take care, God bless, and I'll see you then. See you all soon, and God bless all.